This actually <laughs> records. I think it's recording. Could be recording. Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Mike Philibert, Senior Pastor here at Heritage Presbyterian Church and Western Mar West, Western, <laughs> West Martin, the Assistant Pastor here at Heritage Presbyterian Church. We're here for morning prayer on this Tuesday morning, the 24th of August. I want to say happy birthday to one, two, three, three people. I want to say happy birthday to Sarah Hawk. Poor Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah! <laughs> And Kyle Uli from way back in Boy Scout days. We were all in the same troop together. And Dana Green down in Lubbock, Texas. Happy birthday, you guys. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. That was the celebration. We're going to pray for you all in just a moment. Until then, what we're doing is working our way through the Trinity Hymnal. And we are at 295, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We're going to do the first and the fourth verse. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns, all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Amen. That was 295, crown him with many crowns. And now we're in our Bible reading. We are just at uh, Luke chapter 20. Hi, David. Good to see you. Hi, Moose. Uh, we are at Luke 20, verse 41 through chapter 21, verse 9. Luke 20, 41 through chapter 21, verse 9. But Jesus said to them, How can they say that the Christ is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord. Now in Hebrew, it's Yahweh said to my Adonai. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David thus calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And in the hearing of all the people, he said to his disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love greetings in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayers they will receive the greater condemnation jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box and he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins and he said truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. <laughs> and do not go after them. <laughs> and when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. So it's an interesting set of stories. Jesus says, beware of the, the scribes who rob widows' houses. And the very next scene is one way the scribes and the Pharisees robbed widows' houses. They were setting up the temple to take the widows' offerings, but they weren't using it always for what it was for. They were also lining their pockets with it, and they were using it also to fund uh, terrorist groups, the zealots, things like that. Anyways, but I find it really funny, Jesus saying, don't let them lead you astray when they say the time is at hand. That sounds so contemporary. But here we go. That was Luke chapter 20, verse 41 through chapter 21, verse 9. So let's pray. Lord God, this morning we give thanks and pray for our friends Sarah, Kyle, and Dana. We're so grateful for them, Lord. We pray that you would watch over them, that you would provide for them greatly. To this day and through this coming year, we pray that on this day, that they would reflect over their life up to this point and see your hand in their life, and it would lift their heart, and they would sing your praises, and they would rejoice that you are the God who is with them. And we pray for this coming year in the words of Paul in Romans 12, verse 3, that you would bless them, that they would uh, not think of themselves more highly than they ought, but that they would think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that you have assigned to them. And Lord, we pray that you would fortify and strengthen them. Dear God, we pray 
for each of us, that you would help us, that we would not be like the scribes who go around strutting around, trying to draw, uh, putting on airs, as we used to say, and trying to draw attention, but that we would be faithful to you, uh, even like that widow, just simply loving you with our hearts and in our simplicity. Lord, we pray for Blaze and Togo, that uh, you would grant Blaze to recover from his operation that he just received. Uh, we pray for the doctors, that they would be able to figure out how to address the complications he's having. We pray for our friend Ben Vizure, for you to comfort him physically, as well as continue to sustain him and Janet uh, spiritually and emotionally. We pray for a military chaplain, for Lieutenant Cornelius Johnson with the 1st Raider Battalion at Camp Pendleton as he is now moving to a new duty station. He's moving to LPD-22 San Diego, a ship. We ask you to bless his new ministry as he moves there. Um, we pray that uh, he would make connections, he would grow and um, uh in his ministry, that he would uh, have new opportunities, that he would have the ears and the hearts of many sailors and Marines, and that he would bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them well. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness, and help us to be good servants of you in all that we would do. Uh, we pray for infant crisis services, that you would uh, bring them the servants they need and that truly they would serve the least of these. Uh, we pray for our friends Aaron and Candace and ask that you would con you would continually provide for them, provide both uh, physical bread and spiritual bread that they would uh, that they would not know need except their need of you uh, and that they would see your constant provision, care and love for them especially because you have died for them on the cross. And we pray for OSURUF. Uh, we pray for its campus minister, Wilson Van Hooser, and his family. And we ask that you would truly help them reach students for Christ, equip them to serve, that the good news that you revealed yourself in Scripture of salvation through justification, sanctification, and glorification would be announced at, o at OSU, and students would be transformed, growing in grace. O oh God, author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. So defend us all, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Lord God, I know that there's much going on in Afghanistan, and that is still heavy on our hearts, and we continue to pray for them. But we also pray for those who have suffered greatly in the East Coast, uh, the flash floodings in Tennessee and the damage that was done there. We also continue to pray for Haiti as they pull their lives together after not only a huge earthquake, but then they had to turn around and had a hurricane. Lord, we pray for all the service agencies that are strike, uh, trying to go in and care and provide necessities and helping to rebuild. We ask you to bless them. And we pray for the island of Hong Kong. Hearing again today, just reminding us of the pressure they are under as uh, the communist government continues to press down and now is targeting, forcefully targeting the unions because it's one of the last bastions, actually, oddly enough, of democracy. And so they are closing them down and, and imprisoning them and putting them in jail. Lord, we pray that you would look upon the people of Hong Kong and that you would provide them safety and protection from even those who are supposed to be governing them well. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Inflame our hearts with love for you, O Christ, our Lord, our God, that loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves, we may always glorify and enjoy you now, forever, and for all of our days. It's in your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for hanging in there with us for morning prayer on this Tuesday morning, the 24th of August. We'll be back tomorrow, I hope. It should be well, be able to do that. And so join us then again. Until then, receive the Lord's blessing from these final words in the book of Ephesians. Peace be to the brothers, and love with faith, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Amen. Amen.